Go ahead Thank you. and turn your Bibles to the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 4. I do want to make a, just a quick announcement. I know all those meetings that were announced. Uh, the meeting on December 3rd, right Josh? Yes. yes, December 3rd. That is for all individuals who were also trustee, missionary, deacon, financial, anybody who was voted on for this upcoming year, that is the meeting you are to attend as well. If you have questions, call the church office, get a hold of Josh or myself. The book of Colossians, chapter 4, title today is Pray Before Speaking. Something that we all should do in every day of life, sometimes uh, we all love to speak, right? We all like to give our uh, opinion, right? But we're entitled, I guess, to an opinion. We have our constitutional rights in America. We still have freedom of what? Speech. And we like to give our speech or our opinion sometimes. But sometimes our situation in life is to speaking to people... Uh, not just about the political things, but more specifically, talking about your faith. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes that becomes difficult to you and I. Maybe you were asked a, a question at one point. Or maybe uh, you had, an, uh, again, an opportunity, a door opened up. And this one saying kind of goes through your mind. Because it went through my mind a good bit uh, in times past. Uh, but again, this one saying sometimes comes up when someone asks you a question or maybe someone says, hey, how was your day? What would you learn at church? Or what did you do today on Sunday? Um, sometimes we leave out God because of this one saying, what if? What if? What if I don't say what I should say? What if I say something to this individual about God, and it doesn't make sense. What if I say something that's totally wrong? What if I, what if it is honestly the fear of what ifs? In our passage today, God's holy word, we find clear instructions from God through the Apostle Paul and how we can speak clearly about the Lord Jesus Christ. And you and I can have a sound mind. We can have a sound mind. If you placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done for you on that cross and through His death, His burial, and resurrection for your, forg for your forgiveness of sins, you, ha you can have a sound mind because you were baptized by the Holy Spirit of God. That upon salvation you are indwelt with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has, seals you for all eternity. You are a child of God. You have God, the Holy Spirit, inside of you. And that Spirit produces not fear, but what? It produces a sound mind. But look, I have it on the screen for you. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And what's that last saying? And of a sound mind. So, to get this sound mind... And to be bold in our faith so we can speak to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And to be confident, let's get to our passage. Colossians 4, verse 1, no, verse, two, verse 2. Continue in prayer, watching the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Before we speak, verse 2 comes in play first. Before we start, again, our speech and with grace and seasoned with salt, verse 2 is first. Continue in what? In prayer. First thing we need to do before speaking is pray. That's what we're to do. Now, 
This continue in prayer. This is not a one and done time occasion. It's a continue in prayer. The word continue is a present active imperative. And it simply means to give constant attention to prayer. It's the same idea as the admonition to pray without ceasing as 1 Thessalonians 5.17 would tell us. That we're to be praying without ceasing. A continual active communication with God. That's God's desire for you and I. That through our daily life, through wherever, your, your occupation, your home life, in the car, getting groceries, um, anything. Dealing with children, active communication with God. And when you deal with children, I don't know about you, but I'm in prayer a lot. Especially during Thanksgiving. And you have all the family and stuff, you're around family, you got lots of kids, and then they look, and the kids don't eat a single lick of the turkey, but they eat all the macaroni and cheese. It took me one minute to make the mac and cheese, by the way. It took you four hours to do the turkey. But we're to be in active communication with God. Continue in prayer. Our faith meaning our trust in God. Our trust builds in the Lord as we lean to Him for everything. Here's a verse on, that we're all familiar with, and maybe uh, if you go to Hobby Lobby, which are closed on Sunday, you can't go there today, but you'll find that some maybe signs that they make, and this verse is pretty common. Trust in the Lord with what? All thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. I like the next verse. Those signs always forget the next verse. Be not wise in what? Thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. Respect. Reverence of God. And depart from evil. I love that verse. Our faith or trust builds in the Lord as we lean to Him for everything. So when we're continuing in prayer or constant communication to God, we're acknowledging that He is God and that He is able. And that our trust is in Him. In Him alone. And we have to trust in Him because there's things that come up in our lives that just don't sometimes make sense. Why am I going through this? Or why am I going through that? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust Him. And lean on unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. And He shall direct thy paths. It's at Romans 8.28, that common biblical truth that God's going to work all things together for good. And we don't see the outcome right away. We're going to have a Christmas parade here coming up December 2nd, and we may not see the fruit or the outcome that we want to see right away. But what do we do? We What do we do? We plant seeds. We water it. But who gives the increase? God. Who knows what God is going to do through the ministry here, through our Christmas float, through the tracts that we're handing out, the gospel, the grace, the gospel, the good news, Christ died on the cross for all mankind's sin. Who knows? But God does. That's why we're to trust in Him. We don't know tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen in the next hour. I don't. I don't know, in some ways, what I'm going to say in the next five minutes. But God does. Because His God's Word leads. And we're to trust in Him through our lives. And so our faith and trust builds in the Lord as we lean to Him for everything. And that trust builds as we have a constant communication in prayer with Him. At verse 2 there in Colossians 4, it also tells us, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So we're to continue in prayer and watch in the same. It means to stay awake. Our prayers should always be accompanied by an awareness of people's true needs. And as we observe those to whom we would witness, we can pray more effectively. 
right? That's why we have our Wednesday night prayer time and Bible study. Uh, it's a prayer time, uh, but we, we give our prayer requests. Just last Wednesday, we had our Thanksgiving Eve wasn't uh, service, and we listed all the things that we're thankful for. Those, everything that we're thankful for, we should be what? Praying for. Praying for. We list those things. We list about prayer requests, things that we should be, you know, people that are sick, our shut ins, each other. We are to be praying for each other. Uh, and it helps us, meaning staying awake, uh, watching the same with thanksgiving. Uh, your, your prayer life can be a very active life. Um, there are individuals who are, you know, some of our shut ins. Uh, they're called shut-ins. Why? Because they can't get out. But one thing, uh, some are very faithful in doing, they're prayer warriors. They, they pray all the time. They're praying for you and I. They're praying for the church. They're pl- praying for the gospel to get out. They're praying for December 2nd. Because that's where God has them at that, that moment. But prayer is powerful. It's, it's, it's active communication with God And your faith builds, your trust in the Lord builds as we have that active communication with Him. This Proverbs 3, 5 to 7 uh, takes place. Uh, one thing that, uh, again, that verse 7, just to hit upon it again, uh, be not wise in thine own eyes. Yeah, uh, whoever takes a kid down the candy store, their eyes open up real wide, right? Whoever sees the, all of a sudden on Fox News or CBS or NBC or whatever news you know, floats your boat, and you see the stock market one day, it's like, oh, yeah, gets hot. You're like, your eyes get big, right? My retirement, my 401k is not going to get smashed this week, right? Your eyes get big. What? Be not wise in what? Thine own eyes, right? Be not, this is not our home. We have a heavenly home. Don't be fixated on the things of this earth. Be fixated on things above. That's why Colossians 3, 1 tells you, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. We do not take anything with us to heaven. At all. And so we are to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. And lean not unto our own understanding, but lean on to Him and trust Him through the process. And then I want to say this last part here in Colossians 2. Continue in prayer, watching the same with thanksgiving. This is a very important part in our prayer. It's not just one time you sit around the dinner table, you say thanks. But we're to thank God for all things. Everything that you have and everything that you don't have. For 1 Thessalonians 5, 7, 8, 5, 18, and, and everything, give thanks. I love that one saying. I said it before. I'll never forget. Peter Nagel was in, a senior. And he said, I'm thankful for the things that I don't have. And everybody's heads were like, what? <laughs> God knows. We're to be thankful in all things. That's a very important part. Thank God for what He has done, and even thank God for what He is about to do. And so we're going to try to start, again, one verse at a time. We need to implement this into our life. We need to start trying to implement a prayer life in our daily walk in the Lord. Because prayer is important. It allows God to have the steering wheel to your life. Turn to the left to the book of Ephesians. You're going to hit Philippians first. And then you're going to go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Let's start here in verse 14. And again, here's a prayer from Paul. For, again, praying for them, but praying for us, praying for each other. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant 
you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love. Our prayer life, okay, if we want to have an active prayer life, we want to get better at it, we have to allow God to have the steering wheel to our life. And when you look at this verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts, that word dwell, when you look into the Greek, it means make yourself at home, God. Here it is. Here's my house. How many, has it have a, how many people want to invite someone to their house right now? Well, you can come to my house. My wife might make it angry with me. It's a little dirty. But why would you invite someone to your house? Because it might not be cleaned, right? Dishes aren't done. Um, maybe the dog maybe peed on the floor. You didn't get to it yet. I don't know. All common things that people deal with today. Maybe the cat litter is all over the place. I don't know. But the fact is, God says, dwell in your hearts. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, ye being rooted and grounded in love. If you want, again, it's, it's a choice on your behalf. You have Christ in you. You have the Holy Spirit of God in you. But God says, allow him to take the will. To be in control. God, you take control. That active communication with Him through prayer. Lord, you're going to have to help me right now. Lord, you're going to help me make dinner right now. Lord, you're going to help, have to help me open this door right now. You're going to have to let me talk in a graceful way to this jerk. How many times have you been with that situation before? Allowing the Lord... To take the lead. The first part is allowing him, again, to take the will. To, to dwell in your heart. Again, here it is. Come in. Here is my life. Take over. And as you go back to Colossians 4, go back to it. God, through the Apostle Paul, tells us in verse 3, again, he adds to it. He wants us to have an active prayer life. But he says, while you're praying, okay, while you're praying, pray for me. He says this. With all praying, also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. God, okay, through the Apostle Paul tells us, while you're praying, pray for me. That's an encouraging thing to read and to see and to hear. The Apostle Paul. The Apostle called Paul, he's asking, he's saying, hey, pray for me. He's asking for prayer. And listen, if he needed prayer, the spokesperson of the dispensation of grace, if he needed prayer, how much more do we? There's nothing wrong in asking for prayer for yourself. There's nothing high-minded or selfish about it. God wants us to be vulnerable. We are not perfect people, are we? If we are, just walk out the doors, that's fine. We're not perfect. We all have areas of need or areas that we need prayer for. God says, let it out. Continue in prayer, watching the same with thanksgiving. Also, pray for us. Pray for each other. Now, in our passage, though, Paul gets pretty specific what he wants you to pray for him about. First, he wants prayers for open doors. Verse 3. Doors of utterance. He wants prayers to, for witness. He wants prayers for... Uh, again, uh, for himself to have open eyes. Did you ever hear the song from Brandon Heath, Open My Eyes? Open my eyes so I can see people for who they truly are. See their needs. Open my eyes to see that it's not just always about me, me, me. 
He also wants prayer to speak the mystery of Christ. And again, to make it manifest when He speaks. He says, pray for me, pray for open doors, pray my eyes are open, pray that I can speak the mystery of Christ, which I'm also in bonds. Make it manifest when I speak in verse 4. See, the mystery, what he, Paul, the Apostle Paul is talking about here, is that special and unique revelation given to Paul for the Gentiles. It is crucial that we share this message to the world, for it is key to the, to the approaching God today. And I want you to see something here. God, through Paul, okay, he asks for opportunity to make it manifest what does manifest mean? It means to brought to light. It's our job to tell people the way. You know that, right? We are what? Ambassadors for Christ. We have the message of reconciliation that we can share to the lost. God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We're His representatives. We're His ambassadors. We're to share the truth. It's our job to tell the people, to tell them the way. It's between then God and them if they want to be, hear the truth, right? When someone denies Christ and you gave them a gospel, or even December 2nd coming up, we hand the gospel tracts to them, these little baggies here. They're right here, right? Little lollipops in them too. They're all set and ready to go. You may see a kid with a lollipop, and then the other kid just goes like that. And it might offend you. It might upset you. Rightfully so. But they didn't do it against you. They did it against who? The Lord Jesus Christ. It's not our job to be offended by that. Our job is to share what? Love. Our, jo our job is to show joy. Our job is to live our life because we have peace with God that a world is so desperately looking for. And you have it if you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior. And that's what Paul is praying here. That's what we are to be praying for each other. Pray for... Everybody here has a ministry. Did you know that? You're an ambassador for Christ. That where God has you, if you're in your home, if you're a stay-at-home mom, great. If you work, great. If you're whatever occupation, uh, you're retired now. By the way, retirement, it's not what everybody says it is. When you retire, you're busier. I've always seen that. Right? You just are. Who's retired around here from an occupation? How busy are you? You're always busy. You're always doing stuff. You fill the calendar up. Because you're eight to three job or eight to four job or whatever every time you woke up, depends on what occupation, second shift, whatever, you fill that time up with what? Other stuff. And if you're like, if you're a grandparent, your kids know that you're a grandparent and they make sure you have that time filled up as well if there's still time there. It's because that's where God has you. You're always an ambassador for Christ. That's your first job. To represent the Lord Jesus Christ as... as I might turn on. We're to represent Him. And that's our job. So in order to have a sound mind about speaking to people about Christ, starts with prayer. It's, a const, again, a constant communication with the Lord. That's what God desires. And when you have that constant communication with the Lord, it will increase your wisdom. And that's what the Apostle Paul talks about next. Praying first will increase your wisdom, verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Praying first, before we speak, 
will increase our wisdom. There is a saying out there that goes like this. Verse 5 says, walk in wisdom, right? There's a saying that goes like this. Our talks, our talk talks, right? And our walk, what? Walks. But our walk talks louder than our talks. Action speaks louder than words. See, people in the world are looking for faith that really works in their daily lives. Did you know that? People are looking for something that works. Everything breaks. It does. Even the new car in five years will break. Sorry. It breaks. People in the world are looking for a faith that really works in their daily lives. When they do not see it in believers, they look elsewhere. It's true. This is why maintaining a good testimony is so important in winning the loss. Go to Titus, the book of Titus, chapter 3. Titus, chapter 3, verse 8. Titus, chapter 3, verse 8. It's to the right of Colossians, before Philemon. Titus, chapter 3, verse 8. It's the last faithful saying the Apostle Paul presents. He has four of them. They're tremendous studies. Titus chapter 3, verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to what? Maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. If individuals in the outside world watch a bunch of Christians or church people fight like a bunch of chickens in the woods, do you think they want anything to do with that? No. When there's a mean rooster, I got a mean rooster, by the way. He's going to be dinner soon, don't worry. But he's nasty. And the one thing my kids and I don't want to do anymore is go up near the trampoline. Because when we go near the trampoline, the rooster's there. And he comes at me. I mean, he's got these red eyes. He just right down on me, right? We don't want to go near it. We don't want to go up there anymore because there's someone nasty up there. When the world sees nasty, they stay what? Away. When we represent the Lord Jesus Christ in a bad way, why, would, why in the world would we think anybody would want to come to church? Why in the world would we think anybody wants to accept the gospel? How we act does matter. It absolutely does matter. And God says that it does. And so we're to, again, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. And we're to be praying, again, praying uh, will also help you realize this. So we pray that we can redeem the time or walk in wisdom. Uh, but again, uh, I just gave that away. But praying uh, so we can redeem the time. And that word, again, redeeming the time means to, to buy, means to buy up. And another way of putting it is this. We, we need to be intentional. Intentional. Did you ever hear that word before? Intentional. We have to be intentional with our lives. Meaning planning. Uh, even uh, praying that the Lord use you this very minute to bless somebody. Okay, redeeming the time. It's being proactive, being intentional. You have to be intentional today in the world. Why? Because you have cell phones. You have stuff that distracts us, right? And if you're not intentional with your children, your grandchildren, with your students, with your friendship, with your friends, what happens? Time goes quick, doesn't it? And it slips away. And then... The kids get old, or something happens, your friends move away, and you think to yourself, I wish I just had one more day with that friend, right? Who's never been there before? Yeah. It's like this. Prayer is so important, folks. God says, continue in prayer. You got an issue with somebody? Pray about it, right? And then the issue is this. Is it going to matter in 10 years with that issue? Is it really going to matter tomorrow? Pray about it. Let God take control of it. 
Okay, But we need to be intentional with our life, redeeming the time, because time slips away. Okay, And it's like you look at the time and, oh, look at the time. It's slipping away. Oh, well, we're going to be here for another half hour. It's slipping away. God says, mean, buy up the time. Be intentional. It's an, again, it's being intentional. Intentional, it's with purpose. Living your life with purpose now. And so in order to have the sound mind, okay, about speaking to people, about your faith, or about the Lord, it starts with prayer. It's a constant communication with the Lord. And with that constant communication, that increases our wisdom. And then prayer also helps us speak. It definitely does. Who's ever had a conversation or been into a conflict before and you didn't really know what to say, and you just walked away. Nobody. Great. Congratulations. You're all perfect. I'm not. Yeah, right. No, but you've been through situations before in life, right? And sometimes you're like in a pickle. What do I say? Right? Pray about it. Verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. This is not what... Grandma or Pappy told me, or what your pastor told me, or my dad, this is what my pastor said, so believe it. God wants you, what? Let your speech be always with grace. Don't say, hold on a second, let me go get my dad, or let me call my uncle, or let me call my pastor. I loved it when Pastor Stu said that on a Sunday morning. Don't tell your friends to call the pastor. He got me off the hook. You can tell me, I and mean, you can tell them to tell me. But you're to answer them too. You're an ambassador for Christ. Let your speech be always a grace season with salt. They mean I ought to answer every man. But look how it all starts. Before you get to the speech, it says what? Pray. You know, there are times, I know Pastor Stewart's gone through this before because he visits people in hospitals, and maybe you've gone and visited people in the hospitals, or maybe there's situations in life that just come up. And sometimes you're like, man, you walk into, I've been, you walk into a room like, I have no idea what I'm going to say. So I stop and I say, Lord, you're going to have to help me right now. You're going to have to help me right now. People need to hear the grace, folks. They need to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ, God's word, right? Again, we're to be, our speech is, is to be with grace. As you've received grace, we're to show it and we are to speak it. And seasoned with salt. Not too much salt. Just enough. Again, it's there for a reason. A great illustration. You just had Thanksgiving. If you salt something too much, what happens? It makes it what? Just bleh. It's too much. Right? Wow bitter, right? But not too much salt, just enough. Sometimes we can take, we, we can, uh, again, we can only take in so much information. Like Brandon said, uh, sometimes with our announcements, there's so much going on, but then it becomes what? Information what? Overload, right? It does. But we need to understand how we're to answer every man. So not everybody needs the whole book of Colossians. Not everybody needs to know every jot and tittle at that time. Sometimes someone needs a good hug. Sometimes no words are what? Good words. Sometimes your presence is just acceptable and loving. Sometimes I'm praying for you. Sometimes our church family is praying for you. Is there anything that you need? Just saying the simple things. Seasoned with salt. Don't, again, pour the salt, take the salt pepper off that people used to do at McDonald's and then goes all over your french fries and just give them, you know, just be overwhelming. Seasoned with salt. But for, most importantly, grace. As you've received grace, we're to show it. We're to show love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. We're to share that love of Christ through our life. And we're to answer every man. Now, again, this goes in kind of full circle, though. 
right? Sometimes when someone says something to you, right, uh, maybe you don't hear them correctly. What happens? Well, sometimes you might make a comment that might come off what? Rude. Excuse me, what did you say? You're not coming over for Thanksgiving? You're a terrible person. No, I didn't say that. I said I had to run to the store first. I'll be there in one hour. Oh, I'll see you then. Has that ever happened before? Not on Thanksgiving. You never heard, misheard somebody? But sometimes when we mishear somebody, we get what? React, we react, and what do we do? We start saying something. Instead of saying something, what should you do? Pray. First thing, pray about those things. It goes in full circle. Maybe you need some clarification. Just ask them. Don't assume you heard something that maybe you didn't. But ultimately, uh, we all can be very bad listeners, right? Absolutely. We absolutely can be bad listeners because we, we, want to, we want to speak quickly or we have that remark, we have that comment, we have that opinion. But I look at the verse in James, and there's tons of verses I could bring up, but first and foremost, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man what? Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and what? Slow to wrath. In order to have a sound mind about speaking to people about Christ, starts with prayer. Continue in prayer. Constant communication with the Lord increases our wisdom, and prayer helps us speak as well. Prayer is very important for our Christian walk. So the next time you walk into a situation where you get asked a question, pray. And then watch the Lord work in in, and through you. Philippians 2.13, it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Help us to apply this to our daily lives that you desire to have communication with us, active communication. You desire to help us. Help us to know that you're there, to know that you're there. And we do know that you're there because your word tells us you're there and because if you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you have the Spirit of God in you. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the challenge of it. Help us to apply it. Help us to walk in newness of life. Father, we uplift everybody who's here. We pray for uh, just all the little ministries that are going on and uh, the Christmas parade, the UBU, bless it, Father. We look forward to what you have in store for it and what you're going to do through it. Uh, Father, we pray for the ones who are in the hospital, too. Uh, go before us, keep us safe on the roads. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Aaron. I'm going to ask you to get your hymnals out. Please stand and turn to hymn 592. I love to tell the story. Please stand, hymn 592. <clears throat> 